Now we're ready to take our zip code data and our unemployment data and join them together into a single data set and then consider how we can plot up something from that. So we have our zip code data from the in the county locations and we also have this joined one which was our series and our unemployment and so I'm gonna make a new data set called full joined and that's gonna take joined one and join it with the county locs. Now the join with needs a typed uh, or needs a, a, a column that it can use as the logic for joining things. The names that we have here because uh, so we have this data set the joined is actually a data set that's a tuple and so the columns in it are named underscore one and underscore two okay um, and so the second one, so underscore one would be the data, and underscore two would be the series. We want to check to see if the title on that series is contains the county name, and then also see if it contains the state name. So it's inside of underscore two. In order to get that out, it turns out we can call the apply method, and we can just pass it the string of what we want to get out of it, which is title. And there is a method called contains on this. And so we can ask it if it contains county. And then we can also ask if that same title contains the state. Now both county and state are unique because they only occur inside of the uh, zip county data for what we're working with here. And we can take full joined and show it and make sure that this works the way that we're expecting it to. And of course, what it prints out is I, it, it, worked, it worked in the sense that it ran. Uh, but this result here is now a tuple where the first element is a tuple. Uh, and so the show isn't showing us all that much. We could do the same thing that we did up here where we pull the first element and we look at it to make sure that, that it's happy. Uh, but I want to kind of skip on to talking about how we're going to plot this up. So first off, right now this is all of the unemployment data. It includes unemployment rates, unemployment counts, uh, uh, the labor force counts. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here and for every year and every period. And we had been thinning out our data by sampling it down to just 10%. What I want to do instead is actually intelligently filter out and look at the data from a particular month and only unemployment rates. So instead of doing this sample here, I am going to do a filter and I want to filter for the elements where the ID ends with the string 03. If you go look at the BLS data, it turns out that 03 is the end of the unemployment rates. So we're looking at, at percentages here, how many people, what fraction of the labor force is unemployed. And I only want to look at this for a particular month. So I am going to pick the year to be 2016 and the month or the period to be M how about we go with October okay and then we can cache that so that pulls out just one month for us uh, so it does make the the data set far more reasonable in size and now from here, we need to pull out the three things that we're going to plot, which are the latitude, the longitudes, and the unemployment rates. Get those into arrays of doubles so that we can plot them. So let's pull out the values first. So that's full joined. Now, a lot of times we've been using select, but technically select is untyped. 
So I'm going to go with a map here. And the function that I want to map on is going to take the, remember it's a tuple, the first element of that tuple, and then the first sub-element of that tuple, and we can, I put an extra dot in there, we can look at this in more detail in just a second, and that should have a value. Okay, so the fact that autocomplete filled that in for us tells us that we're doing the right thing, because full joined here, remember the first element is the tuple of LA data and series, and then the first element of that is the LA data, so that's our, uh, this then should be an unemployment rate. Now right now values is a data set of double, but if we collect on that, we wind up getting just an array of doubles, and that's what we want for our plotting. We also need the latitudes and the longitudes, so let's pull out the latitudes. So latitudes start with the second part of the tuple, and it's not a tuple of tuples, so it's just that dot lat. And the longitudes are dot long. Okay, so that gives us all of the data that we want to plot up. All we have to do is, is plot it. So um, we'll make a plot. We'll call the Swift is to plot, and I'm just going to build a simple scatter plot here. So our x value is the longitudes, our y value is the latitudes. For the title, I'm going to go with unemployment. The x axis is longitude, the y axis is latitude. The symbol size, I'm going to go with three pixels across, and the color. Well, it needs to be based upon our values, but we need to map our values from doubles to some colors. So I'm going to make a color gradient. I'll call it CG, and I'll map across that. So what should CG do? Well, it should probably be a color gradient. And I'm going to make it so that complete employment, a 0% unemployment rate, would be blue. And then... 4% unemployment will be green, and 8% and higher will be red. Okay, and to get that to show, we need to pass that plot to an FX renderer. I don't like the default size for video making, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, 800 by 600 pixels. And let's see how close that is. So it should run through everything we've done before. It should show the full joined. And once it gets to that point, hopefully it'll pull up a plot for us. And sure enough, there is the plot. Notice that it has Alaska, uh, it has Hawaii, and it also has uh, Puerto Rico in here. But you can see the continental US. We could theoretically filter out all of these other things that aren't part of the continental US might produce a slightly better plot. And you can see the regions of high unemployment and low unemployment in October of uh, 2016. So we've gone through, we've pulled in this data, we've basically gotten into the format we want using all typed operations on the, uh, in Spark using the SQL data sets not data frames, so instead of a data set of row, all of our data sets are data sets of things that have types, and that allows us to do a little bit more with having the compiler help us check things and make sure that we're doing the right stuff. Every so often, we still have to go to things like this. If you misspell title, that's a runtime error. Uh, we are still using columns. Those are runtime errors. But for a lot of this, we are able to have a stronger type checking and allow the compiler to, to check for more stuff and prevent us from having errors.